if you want to get every dollar in Social Security benefits that you deserve, you have to understand Social Security spousal payments. On the surface, it seems pretty easy to understand. Most people know that a spousal payment is equal to 50% of the higher earner's benefit. But it's a bit more complex than that, and even the professionals who give advice on this topic don't always get it right. So I want to show you how to simplify this and help you make sure that you know exactly how much to expect in benefit payments. The part that confuses so many about this calculation is actually really simple. It is poorly understood, but once I show you how to simplify this, I think you'll agree that it's not that difficult. It starts by understanding that what we commonly call a spousal benefit is usually two separate benefits all rolled up into one. Each component of this benefit is reduced based on the age of entitlement to each portion of the benefit. So to calculate this properly, you have to start by knowing how much of a benefit is actually the spousal payment. And there's a really simple formula to figure this out quickly. You just take one half of the higher earner's primary insurance amount and subtract the lower earner's primary insurance amount. The remainder is the spousal payment. Let's walk through an example. Let's assume that the higher earning spouse has a primary insurance amount of $2,000. Half of that is $1,000. Then let's assume that the other spouse did not have a benefit of their own. This means that the spousal payment is $1,000. Now that scenario happens, but what's more common are the dual entitlement cases where both spouses have their own benefit, but one is much higher than the other. So let's assume that the higher earning spouse has a primary insurance amount of $2,000. Again, half of that is $1,000. Then let's assume the low earner has a primary insurance amount of $400. This tells us that the spousal payment is $600. Now let's walk through an example to make sure you understand this. Let's again assume the higher earner has a primary insurance amount of $2,000. In this case, we'll assume that the spouse does not have a benefit of their own. The spousal payment would still be $1,000 or half of the higher earner's primary insurance amount. Now let's look at a case where the benefit is split. Again, the higher earning spouse has a benefit of $2,000, and this time, the lower earning spouse has their own benefit of $400. Well, they are still eligible for a total spousal payment of $1,000, but it would be paid as follows. First, the lower earning spouse would receive the $400 from their own record, and then a spousal payment of $600. Where this gets a little more complex is when the lower earning spouse becomes entitled to their own benefit and the spousal payment at different ages. Now, you can't pick and choose when you file for a spousal benefit. The deeming rule says that once you file for benefits, you're filing for all benefits. And the exception to that is in survivor benefits where the deeming rule doesn't apply. But if you're not entitled to a benefit, it can't be reduced. The reductions occur based on age of entitlement. And sometimes there are differences in entitlement ages for spousal benefits. These entitlement age differences are usually because the lower earning spouse files for their own benefit, but the higher earning spouse has not yet filed. And because of the rule that says the higher earning spouse must file for benefits before a spouse can receive a spousal payment, this often leads to a lower earning spouse collecting their own benefit for a while. And then once the higher earning spouse files, the spousal payment will turn on. So before we move on to these entitlement age differences, we need to take a look at how these benefits are reduced or increased based on filing ages because spousal payments are not adjusted at the same rate as individuals own retirement benefits. Now we're accustomed to seeing these changes estimated on a yearly basis, so it makes sense to look at that first. For purposes of this video, we're going to assume that full retirement age is 67, which it is for anyone born in 1960 or later. But if you're dealing with other full retirement ages, don't worry because I'm going to tell you how to account for that in just a moment. But first, let's look at the reductions and increases that will apply to an individual's own benefit before we look at the spousal benefit reduction. So again, assuming full retirement age is 67, an individual is entitled to 100% of their primary insurance amount. If they file one year early, that's reduced to 93 and a third of the primary insurance amount. Two years early, and that becomes 86 and two thirds. And these reductions continue all the way down to the earliest eligibility age of 62, where an individual's benefit is reduced down to 70%.
of the primary insurance amount. If someone files after full retirement age, their own benefit is increased by 8% per year, all the way up until age 70. And now let's look at the differences for the spousal payment reductions and increases. Keep in mind, these reductions or increases apply to the spousal payment portion. So in the example that we used where the lower earning spouse received $400 from her own benefit and $600 from the spousal payment, these reductions would only apply to the $600. Now this may be belaboring the point, but I want to make sure it's clear. The spousal payment portion also starts at 100% at full retirement age. One difference between spousal payments and an individual's own payment is that spousal benefits are not increased after full retirement age. One year early and the spousal payment is reduced to 91.67%, 91 and two thirds. Two years early and it goes down to 83 and a third percent, all the way down to age 62 where it's 65% of the spousal payment. So right off, you're probably noticing that not only is a spousal payment calculated differently, but the reductions are greater as well. So these annual numbers are great for reference, but most people don't file for a benefit that will start exactly on their birthday. So it's important to understand that all of the reductions or increases are applied on a monthly basis, and the reductions are not the same for every month before for retirement age. There are actually two bands of reductions. We have the 36-month period that is immediately before full retirement age. So for someone who attains full retirement age at 67, this would be the year they were 64, 65, and 66. And then a band which is simply any months greater than 36 from full retirement age. And again, for someone who attained full retirement age at 67, this would be age 62 and 63. So let's talk first about how benefits are reduced for filing early. For the 36 reduction months immediately before full retirement age, the benefit from an individual's own work is reduced by five-ninths of 1% or 0.555%. For spousal payments in the same period, the reduction is 25 36 of 1% or 0.694%. So it's much steeper. Starting at month 37, an individual's own benefits and spousal payments are reduced by the same rate, five-twelfths of 1% or 0.5%. 416%. After full retirement age, a spousal payment is not increased. Except for the cost of living adjustments, it stops growing at full retirement age. But an individual's own work benefit is increased by two-thirds of 1% per month, or 0.666%. So now that we know exactly how these benefits are reduced or increased based on filing age, let's go back to the example of the spouse who had their own primary insurance amount of $400 and a spousal payment of $600 for a total payment of $1,000. Here's how the reductions or increases would work. First, let's assume that the higher earning spouse had already filed, which means that the lower earning spouse would be entitled to both their own benefit and the spousal payment. If the lower earning spouse filed at 62, their own benefit would be reduced down to $280, which is 70% of the primary insurance amount, and the spousal payment would be reduced to $390, which is 65% of the spousal payment for a total payment of $670. But what happens if the lower earning spouse filed for their benefit at age 62, but the higher earning spouse has not yet filed? Well, in this case, the spousal payment is not payable. And here's the important part. The age of entitlement to the spousal benefit is the age used for calculating the reduction to the spousal benefit. For example, if the lower earning spouse filed for benefits at 62, but did not become entitled to spousal benefits until 64, the benefit from their own work would be reduced to 70% of their primary insurance amount. But the spousal payment portion would be reduced as if she had filed for it at 64, which would result in a spousal payment reduction down to 75%. This would give the lower earning spouse a payment of $280 from their own benefit and $450 from the spousal payment for a total payment of $730. Now, we've covered a lot of numbers here, so don't hesitate to go back and rewatch any part that seems confusing. Well, I hope now you have a better understanding of how to calculate a spousal payment.